Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to the uh, July 16th City Commission meeting. We'll begin tonight's meeting with an invocation by Board Member McCray, and he will also lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag, if you'd please rise. And Mayor, we're not at the CRA. It's Commissioner McCray. I'm sorry, what did I say? Board <laughs> Member? Board. I apologize. I call you back. Let us pray. O most holy eternal God, the creator and maker of all mankind. Tonight we bow just to say thank you, but most of all we bow to say thank you for the men of God and the women of God that came out early this afternoon to hold hands and to unite and ask that point to take a stand. That's what it's all about, when we can all come together, touching and agreeing, and you being in the midst, everything will be all right. We thank you, Lord, for them taking the opportunity to see what is wrong before we even desire to see what is wrong. Thank you for their discerning spirit. We pray for former Commissioner Hay, who's going to be a chaplain this afternoon. We ask that you ask that you lead him and guide him, and let him continue to do what is right, not in our sight, but in your sight. We pray for the whole entire city of Boynton, that you will unite us as one. Hold us in the hall of your hand. Whatever we stand in the need of, you know all about it. Let employees get along. Let commissioners get along. When we get through doing your work down here, we want to hear you say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. Rest from the toils and troubles of this world. Come on home and rest and be with thee. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you, sir. <laughs> thank you. I, I'd just like to say to the ministers in the audience, you know, thank you all for coming out. The mayor's probably going to say something, but, you know, it, it's gentlemen like you, women like you, that make us look and feel good because it's your support that make us do what is right up here. And we thank you for even having an eye out for us. And thank you for praying that God will continue to surround us. If there's ever been a time we need to be surrounded with his care and protection is now. I just want to say thank you. Oh, we're going to have roll call, please. Here. Here. Yes. Here. Here. Thank you. Uh, we'll go to agenda approval. Is there a motion to approve the agenda agenda as presented or any changes or corrections? So, yes. Uh, uh, I'd like to pull. Vice Mayor. <laughs> I'd like to pull 6C and 6G. Okay. Anything else? I have a correction to the minutes that later on. You want to pull the minutes in for? Yes. What what item was that? Uh, the F. Item F. F. Minutes. Yes. Okay, we'll pull that one too. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as amended? So moved. Second. Mayor, okay, I'm sorry. Did you want to add the uh, chaplain? Oh yes, uh, I'm sorry. I wanted to add. Thank you for reminding me. I do want to add under the first thing under announcements, even before item A, we're going to have an introduction of our new police chaplain. So if you put that on your agenda, that's we're going to take that up right away. A uh, motion to approve of that addition. Is there a second? Second. second. A motion to second to approve the agenda as amended. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Show the motion is unanimous. Informational items by the Mayor of the City Commission. Now tonight start with uh, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. Okay, on uh, July 4th, uh, I attended the fireworks with most everybody else. That was uh, uh, very well done. I haven't seen the drone uh, video yet, but I'm looking forward to it. July 7th, I met with Sister Lorraine and Sister Pat about the Women's Circle expansion plans. Uh, July 8th, along with everybody else, had a CRA meeting. Uh, July 13th, I uh, attended a Sister City board meet meeting for final, final plans for the Haitian delegation visit, and that turned out to be not necessary because they couldn't get the funding to leave Haiti. Uh, July 14th, uh, I had a meeting about the new Renaissance Ocean Breeze East proposal. And uh, July 15th, I had, uh, there was a combined seminar of the three uh, county metropolitan planning organizations in uh, Fort Lauderdale, a seminar on uh, a lot of stuff that's uh, happening and, and the uh, future of uh, uh, future trends in transportation. I learned a little more about all board Florida plans, the hotel residential projects associated with it, a uh, large Uber development, and uh, tri-rail gate report. And, and uh, as part of future transportation plans, they're taking three of their older cars and now 
and uh, taking all the seats out of one side and, and uh, accommodating bike racks for about 30 bikes uh, per train. And there's new train engines on the way, so that kind of thing. One other thing that was kind of strange was uh, um, when I was opened the uh, uh, email for New Renaissance Common requesting uh, I meet with them, it was said I was going to be talking to Mark Kara George, and just the, the very next email I opened was from the um, Ethics Commission saying your uh, your ethics violation or your ethics inquiry has been uh, closed and there's no problem. And uh, it took me a while to figure out <laughs> what it was, but it was a, a letter I put out on uh, re pe people that wanted to help out that one needed help on getting the old school that I was willing to help put some time into it if I could get some people to help me with greenways and uh, there was found there was no violation and uh, I'm like who who would do this without talking to me and it turned out it was Mark Kara George and we had a long discussion and uh, and I just like to say to me when somebody does something that, like that without bringing it up to you it's kind of a you know it's a political attack and I don't have a problem with people questioning what I'm doing that's fine and uh, you know well let's talk about it but you know if you, if you don't bring it up to me ahead of time then I'm I'm not real positive about it um, that's it thank you vice mayor Casello yes uh, the uh, first I foremost of the 4th of July fireworks and uh, it was outstanding display probably most of you've uh, witnessed it and I just like to uh, say a big uh, shout out thank you to the uh, department heads and here in the city of Boynton that made that come off in a spectacular way and, uh, and safety was first and uh, everybody went home happy and safe so that was very good I also uh, met with the uh, women's circle uh, sister Lorraine and sister Pat who are really truly two angels sent down from heaven uh, for those who don't know the women's circle is an organization that uh, gives the uh, helps mainly our poor and uh, unfortunate uh, and mostly our Haitian communities and with the uh, learning skills of uh, writing and computer skills and actually uh, they want to expand their services to these people and they're going to be <coughs> asking for they submitting plans to expand their uh, their uh, building uh, also today uh, for the first time since I've been a member of the uh, Commission here and a member of the uh, 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 CRA we went to the Chamber of Commerce luncheon as we most of us attend most of the time and for the first time it was held at the Boynton Beach Mall right in the courtyard and I thought that was great because it gave exposure not only to show that the Commission and the City uh, and the Chamber of Commerce are working together to reach out to our businesses there that are in the mall all businesses I thought it was a great display of unity and I would like to see the chamber maybe have more of those kind of meetings in public settings like that to show uh, what we're all about as a team. Commissioner Merker. Can I ask to pass? I have to ask Lori something. Commissioner McRae. Thank you. Thank you. The first item, I attended the Chamber of Commerce luncheon today, and I did not sit with the group, and I chose not to sit with them because I felt it was more befitting that if I sit with some of the stakeholders, those who have businesses here, find out what is going on within our community. I sat with some individuals that was with Lowe's, and I told them I did not shop at Lowe's. I shop at Home Depot. <laughs> so by me opening my mouth, I'm going to have a tour of Lowe's now. But that's what it's all about. I'm just saying if the commissioners and the mayor, if we can just spread out some time, we don't have to huddle together because, like I told them when I went, I know what y'all going to talk about. I don't need to be there. That's why I spread it out. Okay, I also met with the director of the CRA to discuss the CRA budget on yesterday. I also met with members of Renaissance Ocean Breeze East. I also met with uh, the members of All Aboard Florida. And my concern is that at the railroad crossings, I'm concerned about the common devices. Everybody is bragging about the 4th of July here in our great city. I did not attend the one here in our great city, but I was invited to the one in Broward County. It was a job well done also, and I'm just saying, anytime you're an elected official, sometimes you have to leave home to find what other people are doing, and that's what I did. Still want to go back to the ministers tonight. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's it, sir. Commissioner Merker. Yes, thank you. I'm sorry before. Um, 
I just wanted to um, state that I met with the heads of uh, Neighborhood Renaissance today, and they'll be making a proposal, so I just wanted to reveal that. Um, went to a session which was very informative, uh, dealing with pensions uh, up in Orlando. Um, pensions is a, is a major issue. It's an ongoing issue. It's something that should be discussed um, among the commissioners, I believe. Uh, it's something that should be obviously discussed with all the different departments who have a pension with the city. So I found that uh, enjoyable. Uh, the next has to do with something that's probably the closest, uh, one of the closest things uh, to both my mind, my heart, and my soul. And it has to do with health. And August 2nd, the Pathway to pros uh, Prosperity is having their health fair. And I had the pleasure of sitting down today, understanding and learning um, about this health fair and the importance of it. Um, you know, I always say when I have had clients, what's the most important thing in your life? You know, and people, depending on your age, depending on where you are, you get different answers. But when push comes to shove and, uh, and I look at, you know, the people in front of me, the most important thing is your health. And without your health, what good is it? And the idea that uh, um, Pathway to Prosperity is having this health fair, and this will be the first one, it's that important. It's something, it's a learning process. It's a learning curve. It's what you should know about, not just for today, but for the future. And health is the most important thing that God gives us. And if you don't know how to take care of yourself or where to go or who, whom to speak to, uh, unfortunately, we get sick. So I look forward to this on August 2nd, and I think it's that important for all people to attend. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. I just, uh, as Commissioner Merker just said, uh, the city manager, our finance director, uh, Commissioner Merker, myself, uh, just spent Monday and Tuesday in Orlando at the uh, pension reform seminar. And it's a, it was really a lot of good data that would come back, and I have a lot here to share with all the commissioners if you want to borrow the, the book. It kind of, they covered a lot of territory, and it kind of told us what other cities are doing uh, as far as pensions go. Uh, we had people there from uh, um, S San Diego, from uh, Nebraska, from Utah, and they all talk about things at different cities. This is a thing that all cities in the United States are looking at pensions because one of the things that a city needs to do is make sure that the money is there for our, our people who work in our city. They pay into that pension and when they retire, they expect that money to be there for as long as they live. And cities, uh, if, you, if you're not careful because of course the money that's put in is invested and if you have a bad year, it goes down and cities need to make up that loss. And if cities can't do that, you're in trouble. And uh, like Detroit, where the city went bankrupt and all the employees lost their pensions, that's horrible. So we have to make sure we stay on top of something like that. We're in fairly good shape here in Boynton. We're in a lot of better shape than a lot of cities around the country. But we do have an unfunded balance that we have to try to make up. And so we're going to be looking at that. And that's not something that's done overnight. It'll take, it's a long, it's a process that would take a lot of time. And the main thing is to know is that the city, the people that are currently employed in the city, nothing will change. If you make a change, it would be for any new employees coming into the city on the workforce. So that's kind of where we'd get to. But uh, I want you to know that we're on top of that situation. We're working on it. Got a lot of good information on it. Um, that's all I have. They, they mentioned the fireworks. Not we all were at those things. So I don't have anything else. Um, and Mr. Mayor. City Ma Yes. Excuse Mr. me. Mr. Before we go any further, also on yesterday, I met with members of ballot partners they're going to do a presentation tonight matt forrest and they are our legislation session sec lobbyists to our state of florida and they're our you know session they're our lobbyists and i want to make sure that that is disclosed because i think i shook them up yesterday so they're ready for y'all tonight okay very good <laughs> i i need to disclose too i also with uh, matt with uh, matt forrest uh, our lobbyist okay. else i'm mm -hmm. here okay um city manager did you want to say anything Yes, sir. Okay. Very good, then. We'll uh, move on. And we'll take up uh, something that's kind of very special tonight, I think, is the, uh, the swearing in of a new, uh, I don't know if it's swearing in, but it's a, an introduction of a new police chaplain. So, police chief, <laughs> I'm going to turn that over to you at this time.
I know. <laughs> Police chief, do we have a vote on this? <laughs> no. <laughs> we aren't giving him a gun, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> Pepper spray. <laughs> Chief, uh, he has the best gun there there ever was made, and that's it's God's word. He has a gun. Right. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Commission uh, and uh, fellow citizens. I uh, have a couple of prepared remarks I'd like to share. Uh, there are uh, many uh, preachers in the room, so I hope you'll indulge me because uh, I'm going to do a little bit of preaching. <laughs> 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 I think it's I think it's only appropriate. Um, it takes a special person to dedicate uh, their career uh, to the service of others, uh, especially those who do so in the face of uh, danger and peril. And while we recognize uh, every public safety uh, uh, personnel, police or fire, recognize the possibility of physical injury or death as a result of uh, the job that we do, uh, what I think is important is that everybody, everybody, community as a whole, recognize the inevitability, and that's an important word, inevitability of the emotional and psychological trauma uh, given the horrific scenes that we say, see each day. Uh, just today, unfortunately, we uh, responded to a, a, an incident where a young man jumped to his death on I-95. Um, these things happen every single day, and uh, you know, it's not the TV. It's not the movies. We don't have the option to change the channel. We can't walk away. Every scene that we encounter lives in our mind. Every street corner has a story. Every neighborhood has a story. Over the years, this stuff collects. And try as we might, we can't get those images out of our head. So after a while, you know, continual exposure to some of the most unsavory conduct that people can uh, conduct on one another, it begins to take its toll. Uh, it challenges our once somewhat idealistic worldview, uh, and it makes us reject some of those comforting assumptions that we tend to make as members of a civilized society. Uh, and that's because much of what our officers do every day involves dealing with that which is the most uncivilized aspects of society. Nobody calls us uh, it calls 911 when things are going well in their life. Um, and so, you know, the problem is that our officers spend a lot of time living in an alternative reality, one that's negative, and if it's left unchecked, uh, this exposure can lead to cynicism and displaced anger. And uh, these need to be uh, recognized as hazards of this job. I feel we have a moral obligation to ensure that we have a solid support mechanism in place for our first responders, their families, and the people in our community who uh, find themselves in the midst of, of a tragedy. One of the most important components of the system is the department's chaplaincy program. Now we've had it for many years, however, it has not been as active as I would like. Um, we have several talented chaplains. Uh, two are former police officers, one with the New York City Police Department and one with our very own Boynton Beach Police Department, Reverend Lionel Camel. We have the former chief of chaplains for the Los Angeles Police Department. And now, it's my great pleasure to recognize the newest addition to our chaplaincy corps, a man who role models the type of civility that I preach about every single day as the chief, I'm sure people are sick of hearing me say civility, accountability, and pride, but that's what we live by. Um, our newest Point Beach Police Chaplain, Woodrow Hay. May I have uh, Woodrow Hayes' wife come forward, please?
Got a lot nicer up here. <laughs> Thank you. Would you like to pin his badge on? Okay to stick him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 you see, you see what I mean? <laughs> Got to dress them too. <laughs> You know, I always thought that uh, the God that I serve is a, is a, a humanist, a comedian, because, you know, he's never ceased to amaze me in uh, what he gets me involved in. And I just say, look at the Lord work. But I just want to thank uh, the, the chief and the police department, the commissioners and staff and everyone, uh, but especially my God for this appointment. Uh, it's nothing but by the grace of God that... Uh, that I'm in this position. Uh, I will say that uh, I pray that I will live up to the standards of the chief and the expectation that everyone have of me, but especially I want to be what God would have me to be, and that is to give back to my community. And if I can help in any way in serving, that's what I'm going to be. So from a spiritual standpoint, I'm going to be working very closely with our officers. I've already talked with chief. Uh, I'm going to get to know them personally up front and, uh, so, so that I can uh, help them with uh, their uh, challenges and their issues because we all have issues. Amen? And it's, uh, it's, you always look for that extra shoulder, the, someone that you can talk to and share your problems with, and, and it stays within the walls and the confinement, and it doesn't get posted everywhere. So I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I told Chief that uh, after tonight and I get this badge, I'm hitting the ground running. Thank you very much. Oh. You. Uh, Chaplain Hay, let me just say that uh, as uh, I'm sure I've talked for the whole commission, I'll tell you how proud we are and to see what you're doing. And uh, it's nice to know there's life after you leave the dais. <laughs> <laughs> but... Uh, I would like to, uh, I know we've got a lot of uh, men out here that are supporting you and, and came here especially to watch this happen. I wonder if they would, the, the ministers and all the religious people that are here, stand up and just tell us what church or organization you represent. Please stand up because we want to, we appreciate you coming to, to see this. Please rise and tell us. Do you want them us. to go to the mic? Or? No, they can do it oh, from they there. They, okay. they, they they're preachers, there. they talk loud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start right down here on this end and just go across. Thank you. Two in the back there. Thank you. 
I want to appreciate. I thank you all for coming for this because this is very special for us. We really it means a lot for your support for this. Thank you. Right, thank and, you so and, much. and and uh, to the mayor, uh, this Sunday at four o'clock, Reverend Danes is going to be ordained as the pastor of Hopewell. Install. Congratulations, congratulations. As the pastor of Hopewell Baptist Church. Thank Vice you. Mayor. Reverend Hay, I just like Pastor Hay. Uh, I just like to say that I spent 33 years in public safety as a firefighter and I can tell you some of those issues and, and things that the chief talked about do come up in our careers and I can't think of a better man to be in a better place to help those individuals so thank you thank you Jim. thank you thank you thank you very much okay we'll move on then to uh, announcements community and special events presentations um, the first thing would be item B is the budget workshop dates and times for fiscal 14, year 14, 2014 to 2015. We'll have operating and capital budget m starting Monday, the 721, beginning at 2 p.m. And, and, and this is going to be in the library program room. And at, on Tuesday, the 22nd, beginning at 10 a.m. And Wednesday, the 23rd, beginning at 2 p.m. if needed. If we don't finish on Monday and Tuesday, We'll have a, a thing at Wednesday starting at 2. And like I said, it'll be in the library oh. program room. For, and it's open to the public if anybody wants to be going over to next year's budgets. Mr. Mayor, before yes. you move from there, we have a closed-door session also on that Monday at 12 noon, correct? Yes, yeah. sir. Just for yes. the commission, so we all make sure. Commissioner Merkel, it's, you heard? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay, the next one is item C. As we want to announce the, uh, are you going to do that, Carice? Yes. Okay, good. Good evening, Carice Lejeune, Assistant City Manager. Um, I want to invite the public to the first annual Flood Awareness Workshop, which is hosted by the Boynton Beach Utilities Department. Uh, we will have presentations from the South Florida Water Management District and the Lake Worth Drainage District. Uh, the topic of this workshop is Know the Flow, and it's helpful information for residents and homeowner association uh, board members and especially property managers to come out and learn how to prepare their homes and their properties for uh, flooding due to the hurricanes and heavy rains that we usually experience this time of year. Um, it's going to be held at the library program room at 208 South Seacrest um, Thursday, July 24th. That's a week from tomorrow. The doors open at 6.30. Presentations will begin at 7, and there will be question and answer uh, during the workshop, and also a lot of helpful materials that you can take home and share with your friends and neighbors. We encourage everyone to come out to this workshop. It is the first in a series of public outreach programs that the utility department will be hosting uh, throughout the year. We'll be having other meetings uh, regarding drought and water conservation, um, upcoming uh, utility projects throughout the year, and also we'll be having in September a FEMA firm mapping uh, presentation by FEMA here in Boynton Beach for South County. So thank you very much, and we hope everyone comes out for the workshop next Thursday. Thank you, Chris. Okay, now we're going to have a presentation from our uh, lobbyist firm, uh, Ballard Partners, Inc. We have two of the representatives here tonight, Joe McCann and Matt Forrest. I believe Matt Forrest is going to give us a presentation on the 2014 legislative session at the state of Florida. Good evening, man. Good evening. Thanks for, for the time. Um, this couldn't be a better example of you guys have a lobbying firm and not a lobbyist. We always hear it all the time, like, he's my lobbyist. <laughs> um, we are with Ballard Partners, and uh, while well, the headquarters of the firm is based in uh, Tallahassee, Florida, um, we have uh, some satellite offices around the state, including myself in West Palm Beach. So I live uh, just up the road. Um, uh, it's a pleasure to, to see you guys a lot more often. It was a pleasure to meet with some of the council members uh, that we could this week, and I look forward to, to meeting with more of you soon. But you do have a firm uh, representing the, the issues uh, of, the, of the city of Boynton and your constituents up in Tallahassee. Uh, Joe McCann is uh, also uh, with the firm, and he's uh, based in Tallahassee. So we work together very closely for a few months of the year, um, and then I come back down to West Palm Beach. But uh, we thought we'd kind of tag team a little bit today. Joe will tell you a little bit about 
uh, what happened this past session, um, uh, where things kind of got left, and then I'll kind of come back in and, and tell you guys where I think the legislature is going to go in 2014 and 15. So I'll let Joe Excellent. take it from there. Thank you, Matt. The addresses. Okay. I don't know what these addresses. <laughs> We appreciate you guys uh, very much, and we have a long history with the city, and um, we're very proud to represent the city of Boynton Beach, and, and, and really it's been an honor over the years, and I think we've had a lot of successes, and we look forward to, to, to having that happen again in the future, and we really do. Um, this year, one of the issues that we worked on quite a bit was, was sort of preparing ourselves for the appropriations process and, and, and figuring out what it is that we can... Uh, apply for and 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 participate in um, one of those issues we met with uh, FDLE and uh, Homeland Security and some other folks when we came to Tallahassee when the mayor and Lori came to Tallahassee we had some productive meetings um, and I think we got a lot of very good ideas we were a little late in the process to to kind of get ourselves put a put a you know, square peg in a round hole. Um, but I think that we, we were able to make a lot of progress in terms of figuring out what it is that we have to do moving forward uh, and what some of those programs are and, and where we would fit into all of that. And, and so that's a very exciting thing. I mean, I think they gave us some very good um, ideas and some very good um, background in terms of some of the federal programs that are out there. And that this is specific to the law enforcement aspect of it. But I think for, for next year, I think there's a lot of opportunities for us in, in terms of water projects and maybe individual projects that we now know how we can uh, move that process forward and, 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 and do that with, with how the process works. So that, 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 that was a real, I think, a, a real benefit. Um, in terms of our legislative priorities, I think we had a very successful session. There were a lot of, um, you know, the number one thing on our list was unfunded mandates. <clears throat> unfunded mandates. This was really probably one of the better years in terms of not having things pass that cost us money, just to be frank. Um, we worked in, in, great, in, 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 in very good conjunction with the League of Cities and other cities to work on some of these issues. One of the issues that was a big one for us was, <clears throat> excuse me, was the red light cameras. That's, a, that's an area of revenue for us that um, there was some attempt, as there has been for the last several years, to get rid of them altogether. Um, we didn't, as a commission, support that, and, and we were able to work with the League and others to, to have that bill not pass. Um, pension reform was a big issue also. There was legislation that, that went down the pike that ultimately didn't happen, which I think we would agree was a good thing. Um, it, was, it was a little bit... Um, strong and and that's an issue that's going to continue to happen in the coming years um, one of the other issues that we worked on was the communication services tax that was an issue that was a big revenue that's a big revenue generator for us that is an issue that's not going away and we have to continue to really look at that that was that that issue was amended down to be you know very um, it ended up not being an impact to us, so that was a very good thing because when that thing started, it was going to be a big deal, and, and fortunately, that was another one that happened. Um, on the government-owned utilities and water utility issues, those issues um, moved through the process. Ultimately, they did not pass. We did not support them. We were able to work on those issues. They actually failed in committee. That was a big, that was a big issue that happened. Um, there were just many other issues that, that took place that we worked on with the League of Cities and other people, and we can talk about those in more detail. If you guys have any questions, I won't. you sort of have, I think, in front of you sort of a breakdown of the bills and, and how they went. But moving forward, I think we learned a lot about the appropriations process and what we need to do to, you know, to, to, to um, maximize our opportunities and to identify what those things are that we want to do and we look forward to doing that and again we we appreciate very much um, the history that we have with the city and um, we look forward to continuing wait till they finish oh, okay and then we'll get the okay. questions 
So of course, that, that's where we are, and, and going forward, a lot of those things will will continue to, to play out. Um, this is kind of a transition year in the legislature. This is obviously election season, as everybody that turns on TV knows. Um, but it's also uh, a time for a new class of legislators to come into Tallahassee. So. Uh, after November, we do know for sure we will have a new Speaker of the House for sure and a whole new leadership team in the House. We'll have a new Senate President and a whole new leadership team in the Senate. And obviously, possibly, we might have a new Governor. Um, so with all of those possibilities still out in play, it's hard to say exactly what the main priorities will be uh, in Tallahassee. And of course, uh, depending on any one of those three things changing, most notably, obviously, if the Governor is not reelected, uh, the priorities in the state will drastically change uh, after November. But you can't with some certainty see what was left on the table from last year and where things pick up. Um, people always talk about this year, what happened this year, what we can do next year. It's always important to remember the session is 60 days. It's really not a year. you got 60 days to get something across the line, and then it starts back over from square one. So uh, bills will start to get filed again after the election season. So starting in about December, late November, we'll start to see bills start getting filed for the session, which will take place in March of 2015. Things that we know will be back. Unfunded mandates. They always are. They always have a great idea in Tallahassee. Comes down to the, to the local level for you guys to try to pay for it. So we're usually in concert with almost all the other municipalities and trying to block most of those unfunded mandates. Luckily, I have not seen anything. Uh, there's nothing uh, in vogue right now. There's no new idea. There's no new trend. You might remember a couple of years ago, uh, one of the big uh, pushes was to remove uh, uh, business regulatory fees, uh, business tax receipts, business uh, local business uh, registration fees. Every town has a different name for it. Tallahassee was looking for a way to uh, basically eliminate your ability at the local level to regulate or pass a fee onto your local community. Um, luckily, that's gone away for the last couple of years, so hopefully they won't be back. Uh, the communication services tax will be back. It's an issue that is continuing to dwindle down. As most people are starting to use a cell phone versus a regular phone, pay phones are almost all but extinct. Many of the taxes that are based on the communication services are starting to dwindle. And because of that, we're starting to see the numbers get so small, people are confused why they're paying it. Um, when uh, companies are starting to bundle their services together, it gets kind of gray as to what the tax is actually being taxed on. If you're, if you're bundling your cable, your phone, and your internet, is the tax just on the phone? Is it taxed on the internet? Is it taxed on all three? And so I do think you're going to see some modernization of that tax code. And, and when that happens, I do think Boynton Beach and the rest of the cities need to be at the table to say, okay, we, we had a piece of this communication services tax. Whatever the 2015 version of it is for the next uh, millennium needs to also be uh, included in the local government plan. Sober homes, as, as Joe might have talked about. Of course, Joe can, can feed back into the sober home issue, which was a huge issue that, uh, that Joe actually bore the brunt of the entire session. So I'll let him tell you how it went this year. Well, I'll just say that I think we have a very good, unfortunately, that bill did not pass this year. We passed it through. We passed it off the floor of the House of Representatives, 118 to 1. Um, we got through four committees in the Senate, and ultimately it ended up not passing in the very final committee, and this did not not pass. It wasn't taken up in the last day on, on, the, on the Senate floor. And um, we started last year with really without really a consensus on the solution. It's a very complicated um, constitutional question as it relates to the sober homes. It really is. I mean, this is a protected class of people. And the folks we're trying to protect are the residents who are utilizing the sober homes. We're not trying to close them down. You can't do that. We're not trying to do that. And, but there is, but some of the individuals that are getting more abused than anybody else in this process are the folks that are utilizing these sober homes. Again, they're seeing ads come to Florida, the sober house capital of the world. And long story short, I'll spare you the details, but suffice it to say that we came up with a solution. One of the big issues on sober homes is referrals, okay? going from a licensed facility to a sober home. They, there is a, there's a lot of action in that. And at the end of the day, the House version of the bill would have made it unlawful to, to, to send somebody to a non-voluntarily registered sober home. So we would, we think, we think in, in, in taking that approach, we would, we would you know, have it such that the, the, the people that are getting and doing the business are using the best business practices that are accepted by the industry, not by us, but by the industry. And so that was, that was an issue that we worked on very hard. It was very disappointing that we didn't pass it. I think we have a very good chance of 
getting that done next year. We're going to start with the House version. Um, Representative Hager um, was a huge champion, and Senator Clemens was this was a bipartisan effort, uh, and both of them were very very committed. And there were a lot of really smart, you know, attorneys working on this. It's never been done in the country. Realize this is. A, a bill to, to, to have some sort of regulatory authority on a sober house issue has never succeeded anywhere in the nation. And so we were attempting to be the first. I think we will next year with, with, with what I mentioned as the strategy. So it is the onus is going to be on the licensed facilities. And they are more than happy. I don't want to speak for them, but they're, you know, it's, it's, it's a big issue and it's becoming increasingly an issue. And I, I will tell you that I think you're going to see over the summer some other regulatory issues coming out with the state attorney and others and the attorney general um, going after some of the issues that we've heard about for a long time, drug testing and other things. So, so, so sober homes will definitely be back. Uh, it's an issue that I heard about even just this morning at the North Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce where I know it's a priority to them all, all up there. So don't, don't feel like you're down here at the South County and this is where most of the people are, are, are feeling the brunt of it. It's definitely uh, countywide. They want the, uh, uh, a remedy to this situation. Pension reform will be back. Um, uh, as you may have know, the, the use of premium tax revenues has been an issue uh, between police and fire unions and local governments uh, throughout the state of Florida for several years. They were close to a passage on that last year. That issue will be back again for next year. Uh, they think they've worked out most of the details on it. And I think um, municipalities are somewhat in agreement. With, uh, basically, they'll punt the decision down to the local level for you to negotiate uh, how you would like to use the premium tax revenues uh, with your own police and fire union uh, and instead of the, the state stepping in. Uh, the big buzzwords for next year uh, are going to be uh, water um, and gaming. Most notably for us, water is probably going to be the, the big issue in terms of legislation and appropriations. They're probably going to put some money behind any of the big no, numerous water issues in terms of Everglades flowway, Lake Okeechobee discharges, uh, canals, any discharges into the ocean, springs protection. So we'll be looking and working with the city to, to, to figure out how any of the, your existing utility and stormwater, wastewater, uh, facilities and interest might work into those kind of initiatives, you know, the, the trend up there. Um, we won't know exactly what the economic forecast will be, uh, but again, the state of Florida has a balanced budget amendment, so we always look at what the, the economic forecast is. So far, knock on wood, everything's looking good. Things are still moving in the right direction. This year, there was a surplus, uh, so they passed a $77.1 billion budget, which was $2 billion more than last year. Um, if that trend continues, again, that's a great sign for municipalities and people involved in the legislative process that there is a surplus of money, which means they're looking for ideas. So uh, uh, it's always used against you in an attack ad, but uh, at the end of the day, uh, Bringing projects home is why we go to Tallahassee, and so we're working very closely with, with you and the rest of the, of the city to find the projects that coincide with uh, bottom line state initiatives. So state initiatives like water projects, job creation and economic development, education, public safety, these are all statewide initiatives that they're looking for projects to carry these things forward. So we'll be working with the staff throughout the summer to make sure we highlight those projects. So probably the next time you'll see me, unless you want to see me any other time before that, I'll be popping through City Hall now and then. Uh, I'll probably be back before you at the same uh, dais or at the same podium, probably in January. Give you an idea of what bills have been filed, uh, what the appropriation process is looking like, what kind of surplus we think we might have, and uh, as we roll right into the session in February, March, and April. And with that, I'll open up to questions to Joe and I. Let me just start first. Uh, I just want to mention that uh, when Lori and I were in Tallahassee, I can tell you that the Ballard our, our lobbying uh, firm is one of the highly, most highly respected in Tallahassee. And if you want to get in to see a senator and a, a representative, they're the guys that get you in the door. I know Joe got us in the two days we did. We, we did a world, war, world wind tours through the state capitol there. We saw so many representative senators. And you get about 10 minutes with each one and to make your, make your claim to fame or what you want to get for your city. And I can tell you, you also run into the people out there that are working the other way, trying not to get what you want. And, and one of the best things that the lobby firm does is what they, what they work to make sure things that don't get passed, things that would hurt cities. And you probably never hear about that because we don't get it, but they kill a lot of bills that would have hurt the cities. And that, a lot of that goes into that. Um, I can tell you that uh, I've had the opportunity to be up there several times. I hope 
I know some of our commissioners haven't, and I really want each of them to have the opportunity to come forward to meet with you in Tallahassee when that happens on Palm Beach County Days because it's a really an education, and it kind of shows you how Tallahassee works. These guys know where the money is and where it isn't and what you got to do to get to it, and it's a, it's a trade-off. You know, it's, a, it's a, if the senator in, in Tampa wants something for his district and we got a senator in Palm Beach County wants something, there's trading that goes on there. He'll, he'll fight for you if you'll fight for me type of thing. That's how it works up there, and I can tell you that's the reason we have a high school in Boynton Beach today because I remember back when we went forward there and these guys, we went and we fought hard, and it wasn't easy but we finally got the votes we needed to get the $135 million. We got two high schools, Point Beach High and the one out on, on Jog Road. And that was some, and it was this firm that pulled that off for me. And I can tell you, it took a couple, a lot of planning and work, but these guys were there for two days to make our claim. They're there the whole 60 days. So they know they're in their face all the time and they know them and the representative, the, the senators and reps know them and they know their, uh, so they, I can. I just want to say I thank you for the effort you put forward for us, and it meant a lot. So, and the, before, uh, excuse uh, me, before Mr. Mr. Commissioner Merkel start, I just like to say that I got a chance to work with Joe when Joe was younger, and I was <laughs> younger. It's my birthday tomorrow. I don't want to tell you how old I'm going to be, but suffice it to say that Mr. it's Merker? not pretty. Uh, thank you. Uh, where the money is, I just heard that term. Um, it's been in the papers that Boynton Beach is the city of retirement. That's a plus. Um, but I'm very disappointed. Uh, what I'm disappointed in is not, not with you. We've had representatives coming here. I bring up one issue continuously. I just mentioned where the money is, where the city of retirement, where people should go. And the issue that I think is most important, and it's the issue I brought up earlier that I had the privilege of uh, talking with today, what about health care? What about Medicaid? Where does the lobbying group come in? When the, sen the senators or representatives were here, when I brought this up, nothing came forth from their lips. And to me, if we're dealing with a city that has that kind of retirement age, not everybody has money. Health care is the most important thing. Medicaid funding, it's a disgrace that the third most populated state in the country refuses Medicaid funding for the people who are here, who live here. And to me, all these other superfi uh, superficial issues, and they're not superficial, but they're not as pertinent and as important as health care for people. And to me, the issue that I'd love to see, since you are the best lobbying firm in the state, as was just said, what about Medicaid funding? What about Medicaid funding? And I know it's the go governor's position, but it should be brought to him and to all representatives. If you look at the state, what created, what f uh, formulated this state was the retirement people moving in here. And if you don't accept the Medicaid funding, it'll be a problem in the future dealing with health care. And I ask that you think of this as another issue to be pushed forth and to be illustrated and discussed again and again until we're able to get the money that Florida should get for the seniors who live here. Any other questions? Yes, it's not sir. that simple. Vice Mayor. I'd like a response. Can I, can I? Well, go ahead. You, know, you but pass that off and look at the people. <laughs> he, he throws out the softball. No, no, it's all, it's all good. Um, listen, that was an issue that was heavily debated. And, um, you know, the governor, Governor Scott, wanted to... Um, receive that federal money, and the legislature made a decision, you know, not to. And I don't want to go into who said what because I couldn't possibly remember all of those things. I think there are a lot of people that agree with you. Um, I would say that stay tuned. I don't. I don't know that. You know, accepting the federal money. I don't. I don't want to tell you. You know, that I think that that's something that's going to happen in the next year or so, because I don't. But that is an issue with the legislature, and, you know, um, that's a legitimate issue that is a lot of people disagree with and have issues with. And, uh, you know, the governor, wa the governor had a position that he wanted to utilize that, and the legislature made a decision uh, not to, and there's a lot of folks that disagree with it. And if that is a position of the board, uh, you know, we would be more than happy to 
advocate on behalf of that. Well, let me ask you a simple question. Isn't it logical when you survey the population of the state, let alone of the city, let alone the state, as that important of an issue? Well, there was a lot of strings attached to accepting that federal money. Yeah, that's I, why I, the I mean, legislature I, I really didn't want to say I can't, you know, I can't deal speculate. With strings, that's called politics. That's why it doesn't work. Well, the right. most important issue in, in, for people is their health. And that's all ranges of people from all, all wealth. And if you want to play the political game, well, sure, that's what happens. But the issue itself, as far as health care, it doesn't matter if you're a Democrat, Republican, Libertarian, or anything. It's, it's the money that's needed in this state because of so many people who are, at, at, are in that situation. Mayor? Well, that's your opinion, and you? others well, have different opinions. Well, so. then tell well, the people who yeah. are 65 I, I just wanted that to it's not an important tell issue. Commissioner Merker, that like we did last year, and we will be probably toward, as we spend some time over the summer working with Matt and Joe, and then as we get into the fall, I think it was about fall last year, that we will sit down and establish a legislative agenda as, as a board. And the commission, and this, that's the opportunity to have those discussions that, you know, we, we give the mar marching orders to, to Matt and Joe to go take up the cause for us. So as a commission, we'll discuss, again, we'll, we'll be chatting with them sooner than probably December, but... Um, to, to set our list of priorities that we send them up there to to lobby on our behalf and and get our get our our thoughts and concerns out there so you know keep that oh, keep no, that no, in no, and then no, when no. we get ready to do the list a little to bit me, later that's the time sense. to it's dealing with everybody out here in the audience almost potentially vice health care vice mayor that's why people should get out and vote um Matt, just to quickly, a um, couple of questions, is that uh, what I would like to see is probably more of a, and I know session is only in here for 60 days and you're, you know, busy as bees up there in those 60 days, but maybe uh, a little update on how things are going. Even if it's a short, you know, a couple of lines, this is going this way, this is going as to what we think, uh, just so we, you know, we're still informed, you know, so you don't have to come back here at the end of the year and we find out all in one, uh, one sitting. So maybe some, uh, you know, not daily up dates but every so often throw us a throw us a line to, to tell us on uh, how we're doing up there uh, towards our agenda absolutely uh, and secondly uh, the uh, just going back to those sober home things the, the referring agency that refers the client to the sober home is there a fee involved in that um, trying to think of how to answer this appropriately there shouldn't be <laughs> <laughs> but but Okay. Occasionally there is, and that, that is an issue that is being explored. But, yes, there's not supposed to be a, a referral fee. Okay. But. Okay. Thank you. It happens. Sure, I, I'll have something to say. Um, last year when we appropriated this, I was kind of skeptical, but as I'm learning more, I see that it's, it's uh, turning out to be money well spent, and uh, we need uh, expertise to, on behalf of the city up in Tallahassee. Good. Anybody else? I don't have anything to say. Talk yesterday. Thank you. Thank you for the information, and we look forward to giving us, uh, like I uh, said, we like the updates. Keep us informed. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Keep up, Thank keep you up the much. work. Thank you. Okay, I think that takes us to public audience. Excuse me, sir. Anybody wish to address the audience on items not on the agenda may do so at this time. We ask the you to come audience. to the podium. You to address the audience. To address, address the commission. Come to the podium, give your name and address for the record, and try to make your pitch in three minutes. Good evening. Suzanne Ross, Schoolhouse Children's Museum. I have just a couple of updates this evening. Uh, July has continued on, a, uh, on its uh, strong start. The 4th of July fundraiser was close to a sellout and was a success with the net proceeds significantly inc increasing over last year and thank you to all of you who participated. To date, this time over last year, we have seen an 18% increase in visitation, welcoming approximately 1,900 guests to the museum so far a 15% increase in membership sales, many group visits, and an increase in class participation. Based on the current trend, we fully ex expect to significantly exceed last year's uh, July results. Looking toward the future, uh, we're in the midst of planning an exciting fundraiser that will take place in February of next year. The event will welcome not only the young, but also the not so young, and will benefit the muse museum and create goodwill in the community as well. You will be hearing more about it over the coming weeks and months, and that's all I'm going to say, just to let you know something exciting is happening. Thank you. 
Good. Excuse Good. me, Good. before you yes, right sir. before you leave on the fourth of July event, I'm just saying did y'all tally up everything? Did you tell us what the, the how much money you made? The net proceeds are right in the three thousand dollar range, okay. which is a, over a thousand dollars over last year. Very good. That was my question, too. So that's good. That was a good I event. Just, I, 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 and uh, yeah. I also want to uh, acknowledge we have several of our board members here today and this evening. And um, we, they, we up, thank just, you for your support. They just yeah. stand up so we, we have, know, uh, put a face with it. Wynn yeah, Yellen, yeah. Susan Buchanan, Bill DeBeck. And Lori Livergood. <laughs> All right. Very good. And Craig Clark. Sorry, Craig's Clark. on the other side. <laughs> well, thank while you. you're standing there, I just want to let you know we're really proud of the children's museum you all do great work there and uh it's something that's a gem we want to keep it going uh, i thank you for your efforts it's really and, good appreciate it and i did i do yeah. that uh mr mayor uh I, Susan, I think you're doing heading this thing in the right direction and i think the majority here up in the commission will support it and uh thank you for your volunteerism and uh your effort in making this to what it all can be thank you so much for your support thank you Hello, my name is Rolando Barrero, and I uh, run the Florida Arts Association, which is based in Boynton Beach at 410 West Industrial Avenue. Uh, the reason why I came up here, first and foremost, um, it's no coincidence that we have this wonderful prayer outside because I really needed it, <laughs> and I'm very grateful for, for that presentation outside. I wish it would like that every time. Uh, I'd like to see more of that in our city, and I'd like to thank the the city for expediting a permit that allowed us to have an event on the 5th of July, which brought together children from Bach, children from Dreyfus, uh, primarily African American, Puerto Rican, and uh, Col uh, Colombians and Korean children together, all high school students that were able to get together to celebrate the 5th of July through art and music. And that was done in a hurry and I am very grateful for that. But that's not the reason why I'm here. <laughs> the reason why I'm here is that in last month, we have a prize-winning art walk in this town, a signature event that was awarded Best Art Walk for 2013 by Broward and Palm Beach County Press. This year, we were given 200, uh, for 2014 best exhibition during an art walk at the Boynton Beach Arts District. Second major honor. In November, in uh, January, during the flood, we took care of it. We did not taxi the city. The community, our neighbors across the street from us, our residents came out to help us. Shortly after that, Alcee Hastings sent us a letter, a congressional letter of commendation for our expert work with children in the community in recycling and upcycling. All of these efforts were made possible because of the positive press generated because of our arts district. Last month, we were called to cease and desist the arts walk. We did so last month. We will so again this month. I was told that no meeting is in place with a specific date or outcome or remedy. The cease and desist was just given without any remedy whatsoever. I would like to address, ask if anybody could address the why we have no remedy. The reason given on the papers because we've never done that. We've never allowed monthly events in the city of Boynton Beach. That's why I can't do it. And until we figure it out. We'll, we'll look into that and have staff look into it and advise us on what, what the situation is. Okay. Okay. All the letters have been sent. And Thank you. Hi, Susan Oyer, um, 140 Southeast 27th Way. I'm the head of my neighborhood watch. 
Mike, thank you so much for showing up to our meetings. Um, I wanted to let you guys know, because I don't know if Mike's had a chance to let all of you know, my neighborhood, Seacrest Estates, is vehemently opposed to All Aboard Florida, and they ask me regularly to make sure you guys know, because we want to know what the city is doing to go forward, since I know the north end of the county is very opposed to this, and they want me to express to you how unhappy they are to be, you know, thinking about having all these trains going by, a couple people have told me their foundations are cracked and they are worried what's going to happen when the train speeds double and triple beyond what they currently are. Um, I don't know of anyone who has an issue with the, um, was it the coastal link that's proposed, but the neighborhood is definitely against all aboard Florida and they want to make sure all of you know and that if you, the city does go forward doing anything to please, you know, keep their opinions in check and thank you so much well thank you for the input and I can tell you uh, I I serve on the League of Cities so uh, they they're they're very much on top of what's going on one of that we're watching that closely right. and there was so they get input from all the cities mm -hmm. so uh, your input is very valuable to us yeah. and we'll we'll keep it we'll keep it public what's going on well thank you there are mm -hmm. a couple was it about 400 houses back in that neighborhood uh -huh. So it is a pretty big size neighborhood and you know also yeah. I, I before I forget um, someone told me that Del Rey has a ordinance in effect where when duplexes get sold they switch and have to become single family homes. We in Seacrest Estates have a problem as do so many neighborhoods with duplexes and the drug problem and and issues with the type of people that tend to end up in some of those duplexes. And we were wondering if <coughs> Boynton might want to consider looking at that as well. And I know I've mentioned something briefly to Commissioner Fitzpatrick in the past, but that might be something to consider. It would definitely improve the quality of people, lower the crime rate if we could get these duplexes switched over to single family homes as they sell. And if Delray truly has something in effect, maybe we should look at doing something similar here. That is the other huge complaint I hear every single month at my neighborhood watch meetings. We'll have uh, Commissioner Fitzpatrick will bring it up with staff and they'll okay. see what they, about that, look into it and bring information back to us. Yeah, see, he's very see communicative. See if we want to do anything on it, yeah. He he's is, very, he does a great job and thank you. I, know, I, I agree, I yeah. agree. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wish to address the commission on items not on the agenda? May do so at this time. Good afternoon. I'm Ray Whiteley, 7353 Palmdale Drive, Boynton Beach. I wrote something that I wanted to read to the commission and the people that are in the audience. Uh, God's people need to know that regardless of crime, poverty, and spiritual wickedness in high places, God's report says we are more than conquerors and they are angels with flaming swords standing guard over us. I'm excited to see the men and women of God come together to pray for their city. A city that's had its share of bumps and bruises, but a city that believes prior can and will make a difference. I'm encouraging all the ministers, not only ministers, but residents to come together and show solidarity and pray for your city. God bless you all. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, we will close public audience. Um, we have no uh, appointments tonight. There's nobody, no, no applicants. So we'll go to the consent agenda. And the first item that was pulled was item C, resolution 14060, approval amendment to the city state housing initiative partnership program local housing assistance plan for increasing the amount of subsidy for first time home buyers and reducing the term of the city's mortgage. Vice Mayor, yeah, I think you pulled it. Yeah, uh, just a couple of questions. Um, first, uh, I guess this is uh, since 2008, this hasn't been fully funded. We've been funded about approximately $54,000. That's why the numbers were so low Correct. as an appropriation. Correct. Okay. So Octavia Sherrod, Community Development, Community Improvement Manager. Everyone knows you. Hey, I want to <laughs> raise. <laughs> <laughs> no. So we're just about tripling the amounts that we're going to be giving out to the different groups of uh, first-time home buyers. Um, we're receiving about three hundred and twenty thousand dollars this year that we've got to disperse in this program. Yes, sir. Okay. Now, well, that that's obviously going to fluctuate 
each year. I mean, that three, 320000 is good this year. It might go back to 54000 next year. Exactly. Oh. And there, there really is no... Um, this is what the anticipated income is going to be. So it's going to be based on how much the state receives from the doc stamps. So that is what they have uh, anticipated us receiving. Okay, that, that's great. Uh, so each year we'll be reviewing on how much we're actually, depending on how much we have in that fund, the SHIP fund, to actually disperse. So, yes. Okay, so those numbers are going to fluctuate up or down. When, right. When the allocations went down is when we came um, and previously and lowered the amounts of sub subsidies okay. in the past. Now, we're protected by uh, something about we, we're, we're going to hold the second mortgage on these. Yes, sir. That's correct. Uh, this has been in since 1997, this yes, program? Sir. And then since that, how many have we actually def people have defaulted on? Do you have any idea? I didn't bring those numbers with me, but they are less than 2%. Less than 2% since 1997. So it's a pretty yes, good sir. track record. Yes, sir. Now, when they default, is it something like the, uh, I believe it was the CRA, it's either 8% or $4,000, which is either less or do we get the full, or we go after the full amount that's owed us? Here, the numbers you're speaking of, uh, it's in our uh, uh, short sale policy. Uh, okay, short sale. So, uh, David Tolson's assistant city attorney. If there's a default on the second mortgage, um, which there typically isn't because we're forgiving the debt over a period of time, uh, the default would usually be on the first mortgage. We were named in a foreclosure suit. Um, usually we just go along for the ride, so to speak, um, and eventually, unless there are funds left over after a tax sale, um, our interest would be extinguished when the, the bank or whoever ends up owning the property filing the foreclosure sale. But in those instances where the foreclosure has been filed and there is a short sale potential, then we typically will negotiate with the lender um, and the new owner potentially as to maybe accepting a reduced amount uh, as settlement and release of our second mortgage. Okay. So I guess this gets to the, uh, my, the main part of my question is, now this has been going on since 1997. It's been somewhat successful, only 2% default. Times have changed since 1997. Is this something the city still wants to engage in? I mean, what is the, uh, other than... Um, being a lending institution, really, uh, for first-time home buyers, is this something the city should maybe take a look at? Uh, things have changed. The atmosphere has changed since 1997. Uh, is this something we want to continue to do? And how does that benefit the city personally? Current development director, uh, I just want to step in here and mention a couple of things that are connected. Um, a few of you are new commissioners. The state mm -hmm. has an affordable housing um, mandate in its legislation. It's Chapter two, 420 in the Florida State Statute. Uh, they come back and they take assessments of each municipality to see what the housing stock is like. So it is part of our comprehensive plan to do affordable housing and the state housing initiative program is one of those ways in which the state actually funded a mandate. <laughs> Yay! That happens very rarely. But this is one of those rare occasions. And they haven't funded it well, but they have funded it. So this year we're on a good funding cycle. But it's actually part of our comprehensive plan to examine our affordable housing to make sure that all residents are assured a decent housing stock, which is what the state law mandates we do. So it's not something that occurs just locally here in Boynton. Um, the money comes down from the state for us to administer for that program. In, uh, it coincides with the state's goal of, of giving our population decent housing. Who does a comprehensive study? Does the state do it or do, do we do it ourselves? We do it. In fact, we're about to do our five-year plan. We're about to put our citizen committee together and update our housing plan, which is what we're mandated to do by the state every five years. Um, it's also an element in the comprehensive plan, so the two elements are tied together. The comprehensive plan states the city's long-range goals in affordable housing, and then our five-year plan to the state kind of keeps us in line with our comprehensive plan to make sure that we're following the state guidelines. I, I won't go into a lot of questions now, but I'll, I'll have a personal one-on-one -on -one meeting with you to answer some of my questions, but thank you for that information. You're welcome. Mr. Fitzpatrick. Sure, I, I have some questions. Um, what other municipalities around have ship money, and how much are they getting? 
Um, I didn't bring how much money the other cities. Uh, Palm Beach County gets the ship allocation, the city of West Palm Beach, Delray Beach, and Boca Raton. Um, so we're the only cities that receive ship funding. Those cities that don't receive it, their residents have access directly to the county ship funds. Um, but what I did do was a comparison. Um, <coughs> I, I do have some information on what some of the other cities do, if that's where your questions yeah, are I'm, leading. Yeah, I'm curious. Um, Nancy did remind me. We did get the least amount of all of the cities, but we are in comparison with the city of Delray. Uh, we get um, pretty much the same amount of money uh, in ship funding. But all of the municipalities, including the county, place mortgages on their funds. Um, the county, Palm Beach County, gives $100,000 to le very low-income people, up to 65000 for low and 50,000 for moderate income people. Uh, Boca Raton gives $90,000 for very low income people, 55,000 for low, and 20,000 for moderate income people. Delray Beach gives $75,000 for very low, 75,000 for low, and 75 for moderate. Um, and West Palm Beach gives 50,000 for very low, 40 for low and 30,000 for moderate income people. Palm Beach County's mortgage is for 30 years with no forgiveness, 0% interest rate. Boca Raton's mortgage is for 20 years with no forgiveness. Delray Beach's funding, um, they give for 30, up to 35,000, they do a 15 year mortgage at 0%. Um, Below 30, 35,000 um, is a 30 year 0% uh, mortgage. West Palm Beach's mortgage is 15 years flat. I also suspect that some of the municipalities have not adjusted the amount of funds for their, for their, mor their subsidies. We took the, uh, we just, we were proactive and trying to adjust ours. Our numbers were significantly higher when times were higher, um, when, um, housed, when the housing stock or the housing prices were, uh, were very high and we were receiving lots of money from the state, we gave lots of subsidies uh, in order to help people get into their houses. But when the uh, housing prices started lowering and we started getting less money from the state is when we, um, we lowered our, uh, the amount of subsidies that uh, we gave for each case. We have maximums. Everybody does not get the um, maximum amount of funds. How, uh, it, it's dependent upon each case. It's a case-by-case -case thing. Depends upon what their income, what their debt ratios are. And of course, we want them to own a good portion of the property. We're not trying, uh, for lack of a better term, um, some of us in our industry say we're not subsidizing a lifestyle. We're just we're helping them to be able to become homeowners at affordable uh, prices. Well, my concern is the developing economic inequality in America. I'm seeing that as as a major thing, and that. Various cities are on different sides of of how it's all going to play out, and and I'm concerned that some of the more affluent communities are shirking their responsibility on housing uh, low and moderate income, and that if I'm just wondering how much you know I'm all for you know doing our equitable uh, duty and obligation and. But I'm concerned that we we don't uh, do more than others. That it's going to put uh, Boynton at an economic disadvantage over time. And and so I don't know if this is. I think the American middle class is getting hollowed out, and um, and it's it's going to a few cities. And and I don't want to see Boynton in a bad place 10 or 20 years down the road on by policies we're setting up now. I have. Uh, there was some anecdotal information from in my neighborhood where 
people wanted to invest in houses and the city had bought them for this. I don't know how true it is. I just, I'll, I'll try looking up the addresses. Uh, I can find out. But, it, but is the city in competition with uh, private investors for these houses? No, we're not in competition with them at all. As a matter of fact, uh, in our NSP program where we were buying the foreclosed houses um, and we had the CDC um, was facilitating that program for us, um, they got beaten out on very often by private investors um, because of, of the process um, involved in securing those homes. You're finding with these programs, especially the NSP program, that uh, private entities, individuals or companies that can come in with cash and, you know, make the quick payment for a little higher than what we're, we're allowed to pay under those programs with the funds that we have, that the private entities are, are getting uh, their share, fair share of the Ab foreclosed properties. Absolutely. The uniqueness with our program, um, as a matter of fact, we have been accused of being very hard in our program. Uh, be, um, we, you have some staff who um, we inspect the houses. Um, we look at the total package. Um, many times we found that people who were buying houses uh, without any expertise, without any counseling, um, first time, you know, buyer beware, um, after, the, after the purchase, then they were coming to the city because it was not such a great deal and, and it needed, you know, some realtor told them, oh, you can buy this, this is a great fixer-upper. Well, they couldn't fix it up and buy it too, um, you know, which was the case of many of the NSP houses. They had husbands who had tool belts that didn't get permits and didn't know what they were doing. Um, we had to clean up some things. But in our program, um, our construction coordinator does a very thorough uh, inspection of these houses. Um, he writes specifications that are very explicit um, because we're placing second mortgages on these homes and we want those home people to be in houses that are above minimum uh, housing standards. Um, um, I just wish you'd come and take a tour and let you see what, what we're doing out there. Mr. McCray. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mr. Rod, this money that we're talking about, this ship money, this is money that is given to us by the state of Florida. Yes, sir. Thank you. This is not coming out of our budget, right? No, sir. Thank you. And we voted upon this, uh, gentlemen, for the comprehensive plan. This was voted upon, and we kind of like mandated by the state of Florida since the comprehensive plan states that we need to do this. And I'm just saying, you know, it's not that we're helping anybody like boop, 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 but it's the first time home buyers, and this is money that's given to the state. And over the years, I've been on here like almost 11 years, and the SHIP program has done a very successful job, beneficial job. And this, our city, and I applaud the work, Mr. Rod, that you all have done. I support the SHIP program because I'm just saying from the people that I hear about in the community, when they come to you, it's no shucking and jiving. That's what I like <laughs> about the program. Okay, and with that, I'd like to offer a motion that we pr approve proposed resolution R14-0660. Yeah, I do have a motion. Is there a second? Second. I have a second. Is there more discussion, Commissioner, D Vice just Mayor? Just a quick question. Is it a 15 or a 30-year uh, deal we do with we, this? We would like to do 15. When we, when we first started, it was 10 years. When the economy, when housing prices went up yep. and off the roof and we were given $75,000, we wanted folks stuck there. For $75,000, we wanted a big bang for our buck. So we went to the life term of the mortgage because if, if you sell it and you get rich the city's gonna get a return on that investment well now that housing prices are not you know we're not buying houses that are two hundred and eighty thousand dollars as of yet because if they do go up we'll be back to you to adjust it we feel that it's not necessarily fair to do 30 years that 15 years is somewhat um, of a good number um, to make sure that we can keep houses affordable. In the other part, second part of that question is that if 
these people sell these houses that have these kind of loans, and there is a profit there, and we get our money. Where does that money that we receive back, where does that go? The, the state requires that you put it back into your SHIP fund Close and back uh, reprogram it. Okay. So you can carry it all. Okay. Yes, sir. Great. Thank you. Uh, I, yeah, I, I, I'll go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, I, I still don't under, understand all the ins and outs, so I'm still a little skeptical, but because uh, Commissioner McCray is so eloquent, uh, I'll support it. Thank you. Yeah, I like the, I, I agree with what uh, everything Commissioner McCray said. I do have a question, though. Uh, last year we had like $22,000 to put into second mortgages, according to the numbers you have here. Uh, we got an increase this year of, of like 58000 so we got about $80,000 this year, and you spread it out over the three categories, very low, low, and moderate. My question is, with the additional $58,000, let us say that we only decide to put 30000 toward a second mortgage. Could we do what else could that money, could you use the other 28000 to help people repair their homes? Is there another way you can use the money besides uh, just our, second mortgage? Yes, sir. In our, in our strategy, we, we do have, we, we do use SHIP funds for rehabilitation. And we also use SHIP funds. We not only help them to purchase them, but if there are some repairs, we help pay for the repairs that are done as well. But in the previous SHIP allocations, um, there's a new uh, require. there was a requirement that we, that uh, there was a requirement requirement of a percentages that ha that have to go for construction that have to go to certain income categories you cannot so there, exceed certain, so there is but there was also a requirement for uh, people with special needs in that in the last group of money so we had to make sure that we expended those funds in that category as so well. there is additional money for repairs and stuff like that uh, yes okay sir. that's what I want to know mm -hmm. thank you I have a motion a second all in favor aye, aye. aye. all opposed Show the motion unanimous. Thank you very much. Item F, approve the minutes of the regular city commission meeting in July 2014. If it's Patrick, Christmas Patrick, you had a correction. Right. Uh, I think it's on page. So it's computer quit. Oh, there it is. Uh, I think it's page 189 of the uh, backup. It says. Uh, Commissioner Fitzpatrick, blah, blah, blah. He also did not understand how a 10-inch pipe could replace 6 or 8-inch. Uh, that really should be more like uh, uh, just reverse, how, how 6 or 8-inch pipes could replace a 10-inch pipe. And then r later on, uh, responded there could be multiple smaller pipes in parallel that accommodate the flow. That's what uh, Chris Roshek pretty much said. So that's the difference. Thank you. Corrections noted and will be made. Is there a motion to approve no item F? Second. The motion second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed to the motion unanimous. Item G, G. Vice Mayor, approve a one year extension for the RFP bids and or piggybacks for the procurement of services and or commodities as described in the written report of July 15, request for extensions and or piggybacks. Right, just, just a quick, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just a quick question. Uh, is that when these uh, things come up, uh, to the end, and we just piggyback to it for an extension and such. Do we actually go out and say, hey, maybe there's a better deal out there, or do we just automatically uh, ask for the extension to piggyback? Uh, Tim Howard, Director of Finance. On the ones that are listed, um, they originally went out to bid, and mm -hmm. part of the bid was extension periods, and these are the extension periods that we get them to concur and agree that they'll hold the prices the same um, because we notified them during the bid, during the bid process that was part of it. Okay. And so at the end of the extension periods, we'll go back out on the street. It's okay. just so we don't have to do a, a bid and RFP year after year after year for each one. So we hold them to the, the original bid Correct. for that extension period. Correct. Okay. And instead of bringing you all back all the documents again, right. it was a feature of the bid and a condition of the award. Okay. But once that extension is up, then it goes through the whole back process again. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Tim, don't we, it's typically no more than five years, three. It, it's usually on commodities. We'll do a, we do a year with usually three one-year extensions. Right. So There's that, a couple that's about as far out as we go. Okay, thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. Your motion to approve item G? So, so second. Uh, most second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So the motion unanimous. Uh, City Attorney, do we need a separate motion to approve the other parts of consent agenda, or is that? I, no? I, I've been told that by approving the agenda, the agenda you that approve the that. items that were not approved. Okay, thank you. Then we go to uh, item 7A. Mr. Uh, Mayor, just before we move from uh, that, I would like to say to the, this commission, 
I do thank you all for voting for the playground equipment for Sarah Sims. It's much needed. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm thanking you for the citizens, not only myself. Thank you. I think that's a good point. It was brought up to us several times about the playground, so it's good thank to you. see it's going to finally thank happen. You. Approve uh, uh, 7A is approve award for the annual supply of medical and medication supplies. Bid 051-2210-14-JMA to, to Bound Tree Medical, LLC, Henry Shine, Inc., and National Medical and EMS Products. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. second. A motion, second. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? So the motion unanimous. 7B, approve a piggyback of the state of Florida contract 405-000-10-1 for the purchase of gasoline and diesel fuel products for use in city vehicles and equipment for various departments through June 30th, 2016. Estimated annual expenditures of 1,500,000. Is there a motion? So motion. moved. The motion second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Show the motion unanimous. Code compliance and legal settlements. Approve negotiated settlement in the amount of 45000 in the case of Belinda Lester versus City of Boynton Beach. Is there a motion? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Show the motion unanimous. Public hearing. Uh, 9A, approve request for major site plan modification to construct a one-story 6,430-square-foot restaurant building, including conversion of the former ballpark cafe space 9,000 square feet to a ancillary, uh, ancillary hotel space and related site improvements applicant Bradley Miller Miller Land Planning Inc. Does the applicant wish to make any comments? If, if I could Sir, it's a quasi judicial Sir. matter so if, there, if there's anybody who's going to be testifying about this matter if you could be sworn in at this time just raise your right hand do you swear or affirm that the testimony give the truth the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God? All right, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, Commissioners. I'm uh, Bradley Miller of Miller Land Planning Consultants and here representing uh, Uprock Boynton Fee, the owner of the property, as well as uh, Buffalo Wild Wings. I do have a PowerPoint presentation if you want to hear it, or if not, I'd be happy to address questions. We're in agreement with staff uh, recommendations and conditions. Does the uh, um, commission wish to see the presentation or want to ask questions? Nope. Seeing none, no questions? Well, Does anybody in the public wish to address this item? Not, is there a motion? I, I, so I had a question. We'll get on discussion then. Okay. You got a motion? Take yes. a motion yes. approved. Yeah, and second. A second. Second. Uh, a discussion, Commissioner Fitzpatrick. I was just concerned about the parking that, so the uh, way, way I'm seeing it, well, you're going to be building on parking, current parking spaces, so to replace them, and since the ballpark cafe is going away, that you, you're able to pick up those parking spaces, but is there a net, is there, does it all work out parking-wise? The, there's a couple of uh, different factors on that. First of all, the, it was overparked. There were 60 surplus parking spaces on the property to begin with. And then there's a shared parking study that's joined with the retail shopping center to the north where the college is, the uh, um, Blue Cross Blue Shield office. All of that is combined into a shared parking. So we actually, even without the shared parking, we, we meet the code requirement on our site itself. So there was, the quicker answer to that was there was a surplus before and uh, we're meeting the criteria now. How much of a surplus is there now? Is there any or? Zero. Zero. Without the shared parking. Ed Brees, principal planner. Uh, yes, there, there is a zero, but there is, based on the shared parking analysis, there's 53 additional parking spaces shared with the uh, shopping center over what's required, and that's with a 10% buffer, so there's actually 153 available parking spaces. The the uh, current use of the uh, the other area where it's like a is school now or something. I believe there's a school of nursing there. Yes. Does, does the does the usage of that if the usage of that changes does it change the the parking requirements for for those uh, uh, 
uh, square footage areas? Yes, it does. Again, a new uh, parking study would have to be completed for that change. So is this like impinging upon their chances of, of doing other things in the future? No, again, it, we're talking about 153 excess parking spaces on the site. So even if they went back to a more retail type of use rather than the school type of use, uh, there should still be adequate parking based on the uh, parking study. And and uh, who who owns that to the north? Are they they're well? The owners are well aware of what's going on, so there's there's no problem. Correct. Okay. And uh, when the nursing school went in there and they did the Blue Cross and Blue Shield and the uh, other restaurant there, they also took advantage of the parking study. So the, these two partners do work well together. They understand the uh, parking demands of each. Okay, thank you. I have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? <laughs> Show the motion is unanimous. We have happy people in the audience that we're getting <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're great wings. <laughs> this takes us to item 13A, legal. I'll let the city attorney, you want to just, it's a Thank closed you, section. Yeah, pursuant to section 286.0118, Florida statutes, uh, the city attorney is requesting that we schedule a attorney-client session, closed session with the city commission uh, for August 19th, 2014, to discuss pending litigation in the matter of Laurent versus the city of Boynton Beach Case number 502013CA012688 MB. Um, so this time I would appreciate a motion to authorize the shade session set for August 19, 2014. You had how much time we'll need? At, at what time, whatever time you designate. About how much time would you need? Oh, you know? um, I would schedule, you know, an hour just to be safe. An hour? So yeah. say at 5 o'clock, 5.30? 5.30 because we start at 6.30, okay. so. August yeah, August 19th. 19th, that'll be before the commission meeting. 5.30, 5.30 August 19th. 5.30, you got motion. It. motion. Right, thank no. you. We need a motion or just you got consensus? I just do a, I would prefer a motion just so it's so I have a motion and a second for that time and date. Second. I have a motion. All in favor? Aye. All, right. All opposed to the motion unanimous. That completes our business. Unless anybody else, anything else on the commission? Stand adjourned.